The international search continues for Zibin Chong, the CAMH patient with a violent past who fled the country on July 3rd, the same day he was reported missing, according to police. Back in 2014, Chong was arrested for the gruesome murder of his roommate, but he was found not criminally responsible as a result of his mental illness. And we already know there are several reviews currently underway, both CAMH here and Toronto police looking at how the 47-year-old was able to board a flight out of Canada, especially considering his past tonight, why the NCR designation didn't stop him from fleeing the country. There would be uh, a um, you know, warrant, cross-Canada warrant, for example, that would show up at any border crossing or any police computer uh, throughout the country. Yet the 47-year-old is now outside of Canada. How? We know he had a day pass and was allowed to leave the facility without supervision the day he was reported missing. This criminal defense lawyer of more than 30 years doesn't believe that Chong used his personal passport to leave. They wouldn't have let him out of the country onto a plane. His passport would probably be uh, either expired or held by uh, the police because um, you don't want him to do exactly what happened to escape. I think he probably had some assistance or he had the mental wherewithal to apply, for example, for a passport from another country if he's a citizen of another country. As City News first told you earlier this week, a recent Ontario Review Board assessment states that Chong was a flight risk. They judged uh, poorly in that case, and he was able to go wherever he wanted. The RB says the ban Chong's violent history would show up on official records, though the chair of the board says they don't know the circumstances surrounding his travels. We don't limit um, an individual's liberty unless there's a logical nexus to the risk they pose. So, for example, uh, passports um, or driver's licenses or things of that sort. Was it just that, that he was considered not to pose any risk in that sense? Well, first of all, I, I, he, that's a question better asked to the police. Yesterday, Chief Mark Saunders said that police were told Chong was low risk to public safety and himself. At no point in time did anyone from the Toronto Police Service feel that this was high risk, um, but we, uh, we, we based that on uh, experts in that field. Politicians at the municipal and provincial level have also been weighing in. In the end, there seemed to be a number of shortcomings in the system that allowed this uh, incident to happen. How often do we hear about NCR patients walking away from the facility? Other than uh, this year, <laughs> in fact, within the last two months, I had never heard of it. I had never heard of somebody walking away away from uh, an NCR facility. Now we have two. I also have a client who walked away about four or five weeks ago. DeMarco says his client is alleged to have committed a double robbery when he walked away from the facility recently. He says these two cases alone show that there are some major gaps in the system between law enforcement and mental health workers. The police and the jails do not have a proper system, in my opinion, for dealing with a patient like that. The RRB tells us uh, it conducts about 2,000 interviews annually and oversees 1,600 NCR individuals, while CAMH here behind me tells us that they have 182 NCR clients.